Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi and uh, today we continue with our topic of discussion and the topic is acids, bases and indicators, a topic in Form 1 chemistry. So during the previous lesson we introduced uh, the topic, we also discussed the objectives of the topic and we basically introduced what are acids, what are bases and what are indicators. So today uh, we are going to look at simple acid base indicators and these are some of the indicators that we can make ourselves. So simple acid base indicators. Uh, like we said earlier, there are some indicators that are commercially available. They are bought from the uh, chem chemistry shops and so on and so forth. But uh, there are also some that we can prepare ourselves. And these ones are prepared from plant extracts, from leaves, from uh, flowers, and so on and so forth. So we'll have an experiment. We'll have an experiment, and this is to extract an indicator from flowers, from flowers. E.g. we can use hibiscus, e.g. hibiscus flower. So the procedure, the first step is to obtain the flower petals from a hibiscus plant. So obtain flower petals from a hibiscus flower is a, is a plant that has some uh, uh, pink flowers. Then step number two, we put the petals in a mortar. and crush using a pestle. So we get the flower petals, put them in a mortar, and then using a pestle, we crush them. And then the next step, add a suitable solvent. Add a suitable solvent, e.g. ethanol, or propanol. Uh, ethanol and propanol, they are good solvents because they can dissolve the color. They can be used to extract the color from those flowers. So once you crush, as you crush, uh, you add a solvent as you continue crushing. Then after that, uh, decant the extract, decant the extract obtained, and use it to test different solutions. use it to test different solutions. So the extract that we'll use, we'll use it to test different solutions as follows. Uh, A,
uh, you put about two cubic centimeters of the solution being tested. So two cubic centimeters of the solution that we want to test, whether it's an acid or a base. Uh, we measure that in a boiling tube. And then step B, we add two or three drops of the flour extract. and observe. So after we have obtained our extract from the flower, of course following the steps we obtain the flower petals, e.g. hibiscus, we can use any uh, petals, we can still use even some leaves of something like red cabbage, we can even use beetroot, uh, those are some of other examples that can be used. We crush in a mortar using a pestle, add a suitable solvent as we continue crushing, and then we obtain the extract by decantation, and then we test that extract on different solutions by putting about two cubic centimeters of the solution that we are testing in a boiling tube, and then adding two or three drops of the flour extract, and then we observe. So basically, what we are interested in, we want to see what color will it give us. For example, if the solution is an acid, what color will it give us if, for example, the solution is a, is a base? So, for example, if we test on solutions that are acidic, they will give the same color with this particular extract. If we test with solutions that are basic, all of them will give the same color with this particular extract that is different from acids. So we can have an explanation of that. And you can explain that uh, lemon juice can have orange juice we can have all these examples, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, ETC, all give a particular color. They all give a particular color when tested using the hibiscus extract. So all of them will give a specific color. Let's say for example color red. So when they give all the same color then it means that all of them have the same properties. So all of them are acidic in this case. Uh, we can say that on the other hand uh, we can have soap solution, wood ash, solution, you can have caustic soda, solution, all give another color, these ones give another color. When tested, with the flower extract. So that is an indication that they have the same properties. That means they are bases, for instance. We also have other substances that have no effect on the flower extract. They don't change their color. So you're saying that uh, first of all the lemon juice, all the first ones, we can say that uh, that is they are acidic 
all those are acidic the ones that are giving another color these ones they are basic or they are bases and then we have other examples such as common salt and distilled water and distilled water do not affect the color they do not affect the color of the flower extract they do not affect the color of the flower extract and we basically say that they are neutral they have no effect on the color of the extract so the ones that are acidic they were giving us a certain color the ones that are basic are giving us a different color but there is uh, there are two solutions common salt solution and distilled water do not affect the color of the flower extract and we are saying that they are neutral neutral means that uh, they are neither acidic nor basic so common salt solution and distilled water they are neither acidic nor basic now um, the question comes in then why is it that we don't use the indicators obtained from flower extracts in our day-to-day -day life now number one is that these indicators that are uh, made of from flowers leaves and so on and so forth they do not give consistent results they do not give consistent results and that is why they must be used only when they are fresh when they are freshly prepared you cannot store them for future use right and that is why there is need for other indicators that are more consistent in terms of the results and also they can be used uh, in future or they can be kept for future use so we can say that uh, indicators obtained from plant extracts do not give consistent results they do not give consistent results and should be used should be freshly prepared should be freshly prepared before use we should prepare them and then we use them right there and then so we are saying that uh, they cannot be stored they cannot be stored for future use so that is the disadvantage in as much as uh, they are very easy to make as per what we have seen in the procedure uh, they do not give very consistent results if for example they have overstayed for a long time so they do not give consistent results and therefore we cannot store them for future use and that is why there is need for now what we call the commercial indicators and that's what we shall discuss in our next lesson so our assignment for today So the first uh, question in the assignment describe the procedure of extracting an indicator from red cabbage number two why are simple acid base indicators not recommended for use in the school laboratory so we'll stop there until next time goodbye <music>